based on what you say, what are the essential characteristics of an English watch? Um, an English watch is, um, you see, I mean, my, the Series 2 is a modern interpretation. Had the Swiss watch industry continued at the highest level, this is what we'd be making. And so um, we have the three quarter plate, which basically is a top bridge, it's a solid piece, and it takes up three quarters of the watch. If you have one component, you get more strength and rigidity in that. Um, whereas if you split it into in individual cocks, then you have the chance of cocks moving, shortening the um, depth of engagement to wheels and so on. So the idea is you have a three quarter plate and it means that everything is fixed and is rigid and it gives it strength. Um, other features of my watch are the, um, it's, they're very three dimensional. Um, this is something that used to excite me and still does when I see a great English pocket watch. You know, there's lots of levels in the watch, lots you know, really to the architecture of the watch. And you can see what's going in, uh, what's happening inside these watches. And um, I was finding in the modern mechanical watch that they're often very flat, very slim, mm -hmm. and you can't see the mechanics of the watch. And to me, as a mechanic, it's, it, this is something that excites me. I want to see the watch working. So that's a feature. And um, we have uh, the jewels are fitted into gold chatons, which are black polished. Um, the other sort of features are the blued screws. And we flame blue the screws, but we don't blue them to a, we don't sort of blue them to a blue color. We have a purple blue color and that gives it a real richness. It's something that chemically you just can't achieve, this real mix of purple and blues. And it's just looking at everything in great detail and always trying to improve on the quality and finish of the watches. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me about the people uh, on your team here? So we first of all have a man called Andrew Dallison and he is our chief engineer and he provides us, the watchmakers, with the uh, precision components that we can then work on and fit into watches. Next we have um, Andrew Jones who's um, been with me for 10 years now. He's a senior watchmaker. He oversees um, the assembly of some of the pieces and he's responsible for building a complete watch. Uh, the other two watchmakers are uh, Nicholas Wolfe and Scott Weaver and again they're now at a brilliant level where they're able to take a box of components and build up a basic watch, build up the watch, finish it to the quality and standard that I require and so on. And then the newest member of the team is, um, or youngest member is um, a guy called Josh Horton and he's responsible for a lot of the finishing. Um, he also assists us, the watchmakers, um, for various jobs and at the moment I've been training him to uh, do engine turning. So what's the future going to be like for Roger Smith and Roger Smith watches? Um, well hopefully bright but um, I mean the, the, there is so much that I want to do. The key focus is always going to be on the quality of the watches and um, at the moment we're making 10 pieces per year. I can't really see that number increasing dramatically at all. The reason is simply because of the way we make the watches. There are going to be more models appearing. I'm now working on the Series 3 wristwatch, which um, I should be revealing in about 18 months' time. Mm. And um, Any, any uh, little uh, sneak peeks, any little things you can tell me about Series 3? Um, I hate to say this, but no, there isn't. No, no it really is um, under wraps at the moment, I'm afraid. There's um, still a lot of work to do, but I'll be sure to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what else? Uh, what, what else are you thinking of uh, in terms of the future of the of the company? Well, um, there's obviously my work. You know, um, my goal is to produce a body of work. As I say, the number of pieces we can make each year is very limited, but at the moment it's really being built up out of the series two watches and now the Daniels anniversary. But what I eventually want to do is have a mix. So uh, we'll be making several pieces a year, several different types of watches. 
So there's a, almost a, a 10 year plan where I want to produce several key pieces, perhaps half a dozen models, and the client can choose which one he or she would like. Um, obviously there's, um, uh, George Daniels left me his workshop and he left me with the instructions to continue to um, complete his Daniels anniversary wristwatch, which we are doing. But also he expressed an interest in, or we discussed before he passed away, a future for Daniels. And there is definitely a future for Daniels. But again, it's going to be very small numbers. Um, what George did over his lifetime was to create a phenomenal body of work. And there's lots of interesting watches and uh, watches and also ideas within those watches mm -hmm. that I discussed with George and George expressed a real interest in me bringing those out into wristwatch form or maybe pocket watch form. So there's a very exciting future. Um, I'm determined to carry on with my own name and also George's and to continue promoting this, well, we call it the Daniels Method, the Daniels Method of making watches, which is basically where one man uh, conceives, uh, designs, and ultimately can make a complete watch. I've noticed recently there's been a resurgence in this whole idea of English watchmaking. Um, Watchmakers in in Britain have been uh, reasserting that that idea, and the reason why, obviously, we know that uh, uh, the first marine chronometer, for example, was was done here in the UK. Mm. And uh, what, what's what's your view on that? Uh, well, there is a real resurgence and interest in English watchmaking. At the moment, we're in the very early days, and. Um, we are the only company in the British Isles who are actually making a complete British made watch. Agreeably, you know, in very small numbers, but nevertheless, we have started. This was started by George back in 1969. Today, I mean, in England or in the British Isles, there is a great watchmaking history. We have the greatest watchmaking history and um, most of the major inventions in horology are of British invention. Even the Swiss Libre statement, <laughs> I'm afraid to say, is English. But um, it, it's, it's early days and um, there are several companies who have started and who have desires to be making watches in their entirety within the UK, within the British Isles. I hope that one day that happens. And um, as I say, it's um, early days, difficult days, and um, there needs to be a lot of commitment from people. But we'll get there one day. So where do you see yourself then in this new resurgence? <laughs> well, it's, it's, def it's difficult to know really. I mean, as I say, we make so few watches a year. Uh, we're not we're not making a drop in the ocean. It's, it's a tiny contribution. But still, I suppose, in our own tiny way, we are saying to people that it is possible to make watches in the British Isles. The work that you, uh, you are doing right now and the work that George Daniels started, uh, I would say gives credibility to this whole resurgence of uh, English watchmaking. Well, what would you say to that? Um, well, it's very difficult to comment on my own work, but um, it's no doubt, I mean, George was regarded as the world's greatest watchmaker. He um, changed uh, people's thinking on how watches should be made. He invented a new escapement, the coaxial escapement, the Daniels coaxial escapement, which was the first new practical escapement to have been invented for 250 years. And now, in, since 1999, Amiga, as we know, have adopted this statement. It's an incredible achievement for an Englishman to have changed the way the Swiss watches, Swiss watch industry approaches, approaches its watchmaking. Mm. And uh, so, yes, there's no doubt that um, George and his work paved the way, and it makes my life a little bit easier. And um, I 
really do hope that this is the start of a some sort of resurgence in English watchmaking. At the moment it's very um, for obvious reasons, you know, it's reliant upon what is an incredible Swiss watch industry. And, um, um, but in due course, who knows, it'd be nice to see manufacturing start on a bigger scale in the UK. That would be wonderful if that happened. All right, thank you very much, uh, Roger, for your time, uh, for giving me a tour of your studio. And uh, wish you the best for your watchmaking future. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thanks.